Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Kevin here. I wanted to talk today about my favorite record box tips and tricks. And this is just a short video about five different tips that I love to use. And if you're new to record box or perhaps if you've used it and you haven't run across these tricks, they are really, really good. So I found them through listening to other videos and reading through different uh, posts and things and I wanna share them today. So, first off, my first little trick is actually about file placement and locating files. And what I mean by that is, if I have a song here, um, and let's just pick, I'll pick a song that, um, you know, is something I play a lot. Um, so let's see, um, right here, I'm just gonna use uh, Feel It Still by Portugal The Man, okay? That's a good upbeat song. Uh, great tune. Now, one thing you can do is while I've selected a, a track, and right now I'm in export mode, you could do this also in performance mode. If I select track, and then right next to uh, here in my browse window, of course, it says collection. And this will update depending on where I am. So if I browse a crate, of course, it's going to, um, you know, this is going to tell me where I am. I'm in my prelude um, track listing or crate. But if I'm in any any area or any um, any place in my browser and I click the file, I can click this little up down arrow here. And if I click this, it will show me, this is great, it'll show me everywhere that file exists in my collection. So uh, something like Sunflower, okay? Boom. This is where it is. Uh, if I click, you know, I don't know. Let's let's do another one. Um, let's do one, one, two, three, four, plain white tees, little acoustic jam. Let's click that one. Boom. So here's basically what this is saying. This is saying that um, in the way I structure my playlist, I have events, crates. Um, so essentially, events wise, I've played this or I've had this song in looks like f uh, four, five, six different playlists. So basically before I did the Arnett wedding or before I did the, you know, Megan for Morgan and Morgan and uh, I'm sorry, Megan and Randy, um, I basically put this song in one of their playlists. In fact, I put it in a cocktail in each of these cases and you can see that. I have crates that have that song in it as well. So cocktail and dinner, these are my wedding crates. So I've got that song there and I can see instantly where that song is throughout. And not only that, but I can see when I played the song so I can look at my histories. And this is sort of something that Rekordbox keeps automatically are the histories. So what a great, powerful tool. This is really, really powerful. For example, when I'm saying, hey, I wonder, you know, Timber by Pitbull, what a great song. And I played it a lot, right? Um, where else, wh where do I have that? Do I have that in my, you know, my dancing crate? Uh, and I can look through here and it looks like I've got it in Feel Good Family Jams. I got it in White Girl Dance. Thanks to Nick Spinelli for that idea. I got it in Bar Night. I got it in several crates, my bangers crate. Um, and then I've got it in a lot of people's weddings and events because it's just such a great hit. You can tell uh, where a song it was or is, and you can also see where you've played it. So great, great little tip there, this little double up down arrow. Okay, uh, moving on. I love, and this is something that I, I didn't know about at first, which is kind of funny, but I used to see it, uh, and I'll just walk you through this. You can, of course, update and change the number of columns or the types of columns that you see when you're looking at your music library. And this is true for both export or performance mode. So if I right click or you know on my Mac, I'm kind of like double pressing here, or maybe it's command click, you can see that I've turned on certain elements of my music library to view here in my window. Of course, I wanna see the color, and you might uh, know from my prior videos, I use color code to denote energy of a track. You can see rating, I use that, of course, um, and different things. But there's this preview piece, and I never really understood what that was for. I just, you know, it looks like a little bit of a preview of, of the waveform, and I'm like, you know, I don't need that, I don't need to see that. 
but it's so much more powerful because what you can do with the preview, and I don't know if this works with all controllers. I know it works with the DDJ-1000, um, but and of course it works with the software. What you can do is here, if I'm looking at, let me just, I'll find something that's a little more, um, here, let me, I'll do a quick, you know, instrumental kind of thing that probably won't flag us for, um, for copyright. Okay, so uh, let's see, just a little, that did not work. Okay, um, here we go, wedding song. So I can click this and in expert mode, it just plays it. It's gonna play it through my speakers. Okay, I mean, that's awesome. And I can basically go anywhere in the waveform and preview it. So if I wanted to hear the end of the song, Awesome. If I have hot cues set up, I actually, you can see the hot cues in the preview waveform. I can jump right to the hot cue. See? So cool, so cool. And what's uh, even better as a preview waveform, um, if I have my headphones on and I am connected in performance mode, I'm connected to the DDJ-1000 and I click on my waveform or click on a hot cue in the preview window here, it will play through my headphones only, will not play through my mains, my speakers. So that's very, very good. Uh, a neat trick that I just didn't know about, I didn't have any exposure to or didn't figure out. Um, and that has been really, really cool for me. So anyway, um, I, I will note there's some not weird behavior, but a couple little behavior notes. If you're playing uh, a song here and you want it to stop, there's a little stop button that appears. You probably saw me click it before. So if you're playing something and you want it to stop, you can just click the stop button that appears. Or uh, sometimes you're playing something and if I load something else on a deck and I play it, okay, what just happened is it cut off the preview. Uh, in lieu of playing the deck. Now that's just an export mode. That's just when I'm, you know, organizing my music, that kind of thing. That wouldn't be the behavior if you had your decks hooked up and you were working on performance mode. It would actually just continue to play in the preview mode in your headphones. Uh, but anyway, very, very cool feature. Okay. Next up, I want to show you guys auto mix. Now, um, you probably won't have too many opportunities, too many, you know, re reasons to use auto mix, um, except for a couple that I use auto mix for, you might also. And essentially what's going on here is the software will take songs that you put in a queue and they will work, the software will work to try to blend the songs and play them together in a way that doesn't sound like a, like a typical, just the song runs out, goes quiet, like a CD or something, and then you know the next song picks up and goes. What it what it tries to do is it tries to blend the songs. It tries to find a spot in the track where it might be a good spot to blend. And it also, if the BPMs are close enough, and if there's a beat, and if it uh, if the software is uh, working in the right way, it will actually beat mix the songs. Kind of, um, it's not perfect. It doesn't sound great, and. Uh, countless, uh, there have been countless DJs I know who have talked about, don't auto mix, don't just let the software do it, you know, mix live, like actually, uh, uh, you know, use your, your DJ tools and mix for your events. I agree wholeheartedly. I think that's something that can really set the tone if you're like mixing at a wedding during cocktail hour and dinner, or if, you know, it's just you know, an event, a party, a corporate event or whatever, people are arriving. If you're mixing, it kind of sets the tone for the evening and sets you, uh, it basically, uh, you know, highlights that you're the DJ and you're going to be, you, you have your skills and you're going to be uh, showing them off and really, you know, working to uh, entertain the crowd with your DJ skills through, through the evening. But there are some opportunities to use something like auto mix. One of course would be uh, a restroom break. If you don't have a very long song or a, a pre-made mix, some people make pre-made mixes and drop them. Um, but that's not always possible because, you know, you might have, a, a, you know, maybe one of the songs is on the new night playlist. Maybe you played another uh, song in your pre-made mix already, something like that. Okay. Or it's something like cocktail hour or dinner at a wedding and you need to go take care of something. You need to step away from your gear and do something and you don't have another person helping out. 
this is a good use for auto mix. So I'm just going to show you how to um, how I use it real quick. Um, if you can see here, there are essentially these little icons here uh, over on the side, and they allow me to do things like set tagging. Uh, you can do, uh, I'm going to talk about this in just a second. There's info on different tracks and there is the, uh, the track browser. Okay. So while I'm in performance mode, you'll see a new thing pop up and it's this little guy right here. It looks like a little infinity symbol. That is my auto mix. Okay. So here's the window and essentially I'll just make this a browse window so we can see it real clear. Essentially, what you can do is basically just put any songs you want in here, okay? So I'm just gonna drop a couple random songs in here. Um, and you'll see that it kind of orders them in order that I, I've uh, moved them over. Now you can move them around and you can do this real time too. And basically all you do is click right here, this little button here to start the auto mix. And it's gonna start playing. And uh, I'm gonna turn on the volume just a little bit, oops. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about it. So what's going on here is it's playing. Something's got a hold on me over here on the left track, okay, the, the uh, track one. And then Stuck Like Glue from Sugarland is loaded up on track two, as you can see, or on deck two, as you can see, already ready to go. And these little white box areas, this boxed-in area, uh, essentially is going to be where it's going to mix out. So when the song gets to this point, it's going to start mixing in stuck like glue over here. So for example, I'll just go ahead and force feed this or fast forward. Now watch when it gets to this section, you're gonna see stuck like glue start moving. I'm gonna keep my hands off so you can see. See how it starts moving? So stuck like glue kind of comes in and it's going to uh, basically bring Christina Aguilera down and bring up Sugarland. Now, it also, as you can see, we're into Stuck Like Glue now, and it uh, set that same kind of back-end mix-out point automatically. You can't control it, not that I know of. You can't move it around or anything, but it's just trying to pick a spot in the song where it might be a good uh, area to mix out. And then it did the same with Into Something Good, that it popped into track one, or I'm sorry, into deck one. Now, one thing to note is, um, and uh, you know, you can kind of see this if I bring up the mixer view. Um, right now, you can see that the mixer controls in the software are um, the, the two vo volume faders are up, okay, all the way up, but the cross fader is all the way to the right, indicating it's playing deck two only. So it's playing stuck like glue. Watch what happens when I get over to uh, stuck like glue. I'm gonna kind of fast forward stuck like glue so you can see what happens when I get to that little white box and what happens watch the crossfader do you see how it's moving um so the software just does that simple crossfade it doesn't uh do anything with the trim or with the volume faders it doesn't certainly doesn't do anything with your eqs and your lows or mids and if again if the the um, BPMs are close. It will uh, beat match a little, and then, and then the song once it kicks in, it'll kind of bring the beat uh, BPM back up to the standard BPM of the song. Pretty cool, but you know it's not going to win any awards, and you can tell. And other other DJs will will hear it, I'm sure. Um, if you're just doing something like cocktail or dinner, uh, unless people are really paying attention, it it can go on, and you could do a few songs via auto mix and not trigger anybody's sensibilities. So just uh, wanted to show you guys that. I use Auto Mix again for those kind of situations where I might need uh, a little help because I need to step away from my um, my DJ booth. There are little options and a couple things you can set in there, but I think I just wanted to show you guys um, the feature. One other thing while we're talking about these buttons on the right, um, this feature here, this related track window. This is so powerful. And uh, I, I know there's some really good tutorials on how to use it and get the most out of it. But I just wanted to really quickly show you um, what you can do with related tracks. So let's just, um, I, I want to pick something that's uh, kind of a, a good, um, you know, a good dancing song or something. Let's say we're playing, um, oh, I don't know. I was thinking, uh, you know, hotel room service or something. Okay. So uh, since we were talking about Pitbull earlier, so we've got this jam and it's uh, you know such a good song. 
And let's say we're kind of getting to the end of the track and we're like, what should we play next? You know, I want the same vibe or I want to, I definitely want to keep the dance floor popping, but I, I just, I don't know. I can't think of anything. Certainly, of course, hopefully you have crates and folders and things like that you could browse. But again, maybe it's coming up on, you know, you're at the, you're at the end of the song and you need something fast. What this can do, and you don't have to just use this as a panic mode button, but it does work as a panic mode. Uh, you can click this little he icon here. It looks like, uh, I don't know, two little uh, discs or records kind of connected together. And what this will do is will give you ideas of songs to play based on certain criteria. So I'm going to go ahead and make this like a little bit bigger so you can see. So we have um, hotel room service, let's say playing on the, on, on deck one. Now you can actually tell the software, do you want to, do you want it to look at deck one or another, tr another deck, another channel? I'm just keeping it on master. So I just keep it on master. So whatever the active deck is, it's going to know, and it's going to say, Hey, Kevin, here are some opportunities or some good songs that you could play. Uh, I love this feature and it really helps just maybe pull from your library things that you haven't played in a while or that you just you forgot about. So for example, hotel room service, well, since this is my you know DJ intro edit and it's telling me I could play hotel room service because it's a similar BPM. Well, yeah, thank you. Uh, but what about Icona, Icona Pop? I love it. Great, great match with that song. Party Rock Anthem. Great, rock, you know, really high energy, great mix for that song. Um, you know, you could bring in shots, right? That's ugh, awesome. You know, little Kesha, uh, little Flow Rider. I mean, all these are songs are in the zone and the software did really good. Well, what's going on there? What, how, how did it know so well? Not only did it know really well on a BPM, so you can see the BPM here, but it's also picking some songs that are in the same key, 4A, which is the, the Camelot uh, key that the song's in. Not all of them, but some of them. What's going on? Well, what's so cool about this is you can really dial it in by clicking the gear icon, and here are all your settings for related tracks. So I have just, you know, you can turn this, uh, change these, turn these on, on or off. I have BPM, current track, plus or minus 5%. Okay, I have key off right now, but you could turn it on if you were, you know, I think open format folks like myself, we're not mixing in key all that often because you're trying to, you're not focusing on the key matchup, you're more focused on the energy uh, matchup and making sure they're keeping the dance floor moving and things like that. Um, and making sure people connect with the lyrics and the songs. A little bit different than the, the you know, maybe if you're doing an EDM concert or something like that. Anyway, uh, so I'm not doing key here. I could turn it on if I wanted to. Uh, year, so I wanted to keep here, uh, whatever I'm playing, kind of like in that same zone, so plus or minus five years. As you can see, you can change any of these to whatever you want. You could, um, hey, maybe I only want to play fresh tracks that I just added over the last couple months or whatever. Boom, you could change that. You could add that. You could add in all these things. This is a powerful one, history. These are tracks that you've played in the vicinity of that track in your histories. So Rekordbox will very quickly and rapidly check all your histories and say, oh, you know, one time when you played room, Hotel Room Service, you also played this song, two songs ahead of it or two songs back if I chose this option. So really powerful. And of course, if you start to layer these, like I want to look at my history and I want the BPM to be similar and I want whatever, I want it to be a rating of four stars or up. Boom, you've got a really powerful way to access real time your library. So you can do so much here. Um, and I just wanted to show you a quick preview. This is such a powerful tool. I love related tracks. And in fact, um, you don't have to just access it there. There's a cool um, section right under here, um, under your collection called related tracks. And you get a couple like, uh, I don't know, um, a couple, um, you know, like general or automated uh, track suggestion items. So era mood association, these popped up and you can create new auto playlists that have these. So um, same artists like, hey, let me see everything by Pitbull that I have in my library right now. Boom. Um, you know, or let me see what uh, what those next or prior tracks have been in the past. Boom. Um, how about association? Like 
it's finding things and the, the software is leveraging the different uh, aspects that you put in and program in about your songs in your library. How cool is that? So in any case, it can give you some inspiration and it can, you know, like I haven't played this one in a long time. Rihanna, only girl in the world, but it, it'll go with hotel room service. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll see that and I'm like, yeah, let's drop it. That'll be a great, a great song to play. As you can see, it's a very powerful, this is a very powerful piece of, of record box. I don't think people take enough advantage of. Anyway, I've got one more tip for you, but before I do that, could you please, if you're not already, subscribe to my channel uh, here at Mobile DJ Remastered on my channel. I'm really trying hard to give you guys tips and tricks and different perspectives on being a mobile DJ. So hopefully you're finding it useful and uh, please subscribe if you're not already. Okay, my last tip here for record box is really something that, again, it kind of goes along the lines of music management, but what I'm gonna show you guys is um, essentially a tip to let you find and put your hand on music quickly that uh, you, know, you might need to get access to. So here's the scenario. If I have, let's say, um, some Irish music, okay? I could do a couple things. I can make an Irish playlist, right? I could certainly go into my crates and I could build like, you know, um, a special Irish audience playlist or I could do a, uh, you know, a, I don't know, a Celtic playlist or something like that. Um, I could also use the very powerful tagging system and build uh, just like I have a Latin tag here, I could have an Irish tag. And then all my Irish songs, if I have any, I could tag as Irish. Um, but there's an easier way for those things that are not super common. For example, you know, things like uh, an Irish song. I, I don't have a ton of Irish music. I just don't have that in my collection. But I do, if I want to pull something Irish or something with a sp very specific style, I need a way to grab it quick and I need a way to search it quick. So for example, uh, here, if I type Irish, um, here's a couple songs. Well, some have Irish in the name. So, okay, that's gonna come up obviously. But these other songs, uh, this Dropkick Murphy's, not Irish in the name, right? There's no Irish in the name. Um, even the Ed Sheeran song, Nancy Mulligan, definitely very Irish sounding, not in the name, but it came up, why? Well. What I do is I don't have a tag on it, okay? I don't have a you know, playlist or crate for Irish, but what I do is over here on the right, if I click the little I, it's basically gonna allow me to display any kind of information about a track, okay? So um, there is the ability to uh, you know assign different text to, tra to, um, to tracks. So let's look at the black rose. This one has Irish in the album title. Hmm, interesting. So that's why it came up. Nancy Mulligan, it didn't have anything in its, um, in, in, in basically in the information on the track. I typed in Irish on the album cover. That's not the album that uh, this song, this track is part of, but I put Irish in there so that I would have it. Um, sometimes you might be able to um, just add that as the album, or you could just put it at the end. You know, like for example, if you had the album, maybe you're very meticulous and you like to capture your album uh, titles in your music library, just put Irish at the end or use one of these other fields. You can do so much with this music library and then it's searchable and it's part of the metadata of the MP3 in your music library. So if I do happen to have a problem with my music library, it's actually in the file, it's in the MP3 itself so I can recover it later. Guys, that is my fifth and final tip here for Record Box. I hope you learned something or at least got a different insight into one of the tips that I shared today. Hopefully that'll help you just be uh, even a better DJ and take advantage of the power of Record Box for managing your library and also performing from, from Record Box Live. So thank you so much and I'll see you next time.